let's get on to the big news of the day. Luis J. Gomez might be the Brendan Schaub of the East Coast. Luis J. Gomez may be the Brendan Schaub of the East Coast, which may explain the vitriol and the hate that he has for him. Because I think for us, right, it makes a lot of sense for us to laugh at these guys because we have no interest to be them. We have no interest to be stand-up comedians. We don't care about their scene. We don't want to be in the green rooms. We don't care about getting on Rogan. We're just regular people just pointing and laughing at these dum-dums who take themselves way too seriously. So I can sit here and I can laugh at these guys and I can say with my whole heart, cross, you know, the little cross thing, right? Swear my family that I am not in one iota jealous of any of these motherfuckers i don't give a fuck it's just funny to laugh at them but i think hear me out if you're a professional stand-up comedian and you go out of your way to insult mock or diss somebody else who's in the same industry as you you're probably jealous so it makes me think all those times that luce gomez was dissing brendan and trying to you know make friends with the guys over on the fire and the kids subreddit i think it was actually more so jealousy he felt like he should have what brendan has he felt like he should be joe rogan's friend or he should get on rogan that's really where that came from it wasn't because he thought brendan was a redact like we do it wasn't that he generally does think brendan is horrible stand-up comedy it wasn't that he thinks that brendan's a douchebag like we do no it's that he was actually jealous that's actually worse because I think if you're actually working in the same industry, there should be a there should be a sense of like professional courtesy and just you should just avoid talking about your colleagues in any way, shape, or form disparagingly, disparagingly or whatever that word is in front of regular people. I honestly do think so. I honestly do think so. But I think the likes of Luis J. Gomez and stuff, those guys are always secretly jealous because they were on the outside. They couldn't get on the inside. They couldn't become part of the cool guy club. And as we're going to see here, courtesy of this screenshot, or courtesy of this tweet, sorry, um, he's clearly treating his own employees the same way um, as Brendan treats his. So this is a guy called Bobby Hutch, who was a main part of Gas Digital, one of their main producers, one of the, fa the face of the guys is behind the scene. And he's now left, or he got fired from Gas Digital by Luis J. Gomez because according to him, he asked for some money. So we're going to read... What should we read? Let's read his, his Instagram one first. I guess he's arguing that he's not getting paid enough being a podcast producer at Gas Digital. He's probably getting underpaid. So the regular range to get a, be a podcast producer is between 75,000 and 100,000. I'm guessing in New York. But I'm guessing in New York, sorry, in New York is similar like fucking, um, why am I saying like that? In New York, it's similar like London, similar to London, where the cost of living is super high. So I'm assuming... 100,000 probably doesn't even go that far in New York, unfortunately, with the price of rent and all that sort of stuff, but whatever. So wherever he's on now, he must be living <laughs> like really tight. So he's obviously tight. So um, the fucking, what you call it? His, let's see what people said. said, is there a beef between you and, uh, and Gas? Did Lewis fire you? And the reply from Bobby Hutch is as follows. He says, he fired me for asking for $100 for creating the Regs logo then hired me back two days later under the agreement that I would not be insulted or screamed at. Then seven days later, I was insulted and screamed at, so I quit. So Luis J. Gomez is out here screaming at his staff members the same way we see him screaming on camera. He does that behind the scenes. Can you imagine how insulted you must be to see someone like a Luis J. Gomez in screaming at you, telling you you're an idiot, telling you don't know what you're doing? You would, you, I would be offended, don't get me wrong, because he's a fucking redact. And that's also not the best way to talk to your employees. That's not a great way to motivate people by just screaming and shouting at them all the fucking time. But I want to know what the regs look. What's the regs logo? Oh, that's the logo for that podcast that they've got, right? See, that's the thing I mean about these guys, right? Don't get me wrong. Um, it's a good logo. So big up Bobby Hutch for designing it. But it's not crazy, right? It's not something that you would assume you would need some to pay somebody to make. You could make that yourself on Photoshop if you had, you know, a day to learn and shit. It's not that difficult on Illustrator. It's not that hard to make a logo like this. But don't get me wrong, he made it still. But this is what I don't understand about this, guys, right? <clears throat> 
Lucia Gomez clearly needs that guy. That podcast producer guy does a lot. He does. He's even fucking designing logos. So clearly, Lucia Gomez has no idea how to do most things when it comes to running his network. So why don't you pay somebody accordingly? Why don't you make sure the people next to you are the most well paid? That's what I said about Brendan. I've got a feeling Brendan doesn't even pay Chin properly when Chin is the most important person at Thick Boy and the Fire and the Kid, probably more so than Brendan. Because without Chin, they can't upload episodes. They can't even record shows because none of them know how to do shit. So why don't these guys treat the people next to them good? I've never understood this. It's really odd to me. Anyway, going back to the fucking Fred. Um, he said that, what he said about Luis Shea Gomez. Let's see what other questions people asked him. Um, I've been wondering where you've been. It's a bummer, but you deserve better. Keep rocking, brother. What's his reply here? Uh, he says, I'm done with producing other people's vision. I'm working in the process of entering another union, a job that respects their employees, not one that uses them to boost, sorry, to boost, to boost their own career, actually pays them employees instead of giving them a five-day trip to Jamaica as a status symbol for themselves, where they make the employee pay for their own way to get there. <gasps> oh my God, Luis J. Gomez, man, what are you doing, bro? So that Jamaica trip that they all go on, the Gas Digital team, that he uses like as a flex, my network is popping, my employees. He makes them pay to go there and pay their own flights. I've gone on company holidays before or company trips. They usually pay for your trip and pay for your accommodation. Why do they? So that's not a company trip. That's like, an oblige, that's like going on a destination wedding. You have to pay for your own flights to get there. So it ends up costing you an arm and a leg to get to your friend's wedding. And then they end up getting divorced the next day and you end up getting super angry. That is so fucked up, bro. So he doesn't, he'd rather not pay you, but he'll do these grand gestures. It looks similar to like Brendan, isn't it? Brendan probably paid those guys to go to with him to shows and shit, but he probably never paid BGL, like the salary he was owed. But he'd make sure he's looked after during the day. He'd get him drinks. He'd buy him food, but he wouldn't put money in his pocket. That is so, so bad. Anyway, it continues. Another, what's another thing here? You're telling me a guy who calls himself the Puerto Rican rattlesnake doesn't pay a decent living wage. That's a good comment. Big up you, Barnes. <laughs> That's a good one. I guess it's one for me. Believing in him and the product. Changing my life, leaving a career and ultimately gaining nothing from the whole experience. Yeah, you. to be fair, as much as I feel sympathy for this guy, I also think this kind of reminds me a little bit of the Joe Budden podcasting. Lucia Gomez is a piece of shit, right? And I think even he would admit he is. So you have to move accordingly with someone like that. You can't really pin your entire future hopes on Luis J. Gomez. You kind of have to get what you can get for him and that experience working at Gas Digital and use that experience to go somewhere else. But you can't be staying there forever and ever and ever because you know eventually he's going to fuck you over. If people fuck over people in the past, you can't think you're special. You can't think you're the... You're the, you're the chosen one that's not going to get um, eventually bit in the ass, right? So maybe he has himself to blame there. Um, I thought you got promoted to partners with those two for all the years of work you did. What do you say here? I received one single payment for my percentage of the company over the past seven years. The payment was roughly $56. <laughs> Please tell me you've make, you will make more um with you all do what well, i don't know what that means da, 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 da. anyway you, you get a gist of it right so he said this and then lucia gomez has obviously been replying back and he's not up he's not happy about everything he's been saying um he's made some okay here's a meme uh of this one what's this meme saying lucia gomez will be replying it says we can't pay the producers gas digital subscription fees we weed kratom online gambling dick pill ads podcast merch uh, Legion of Skanks theatre theater shows, um, Skank Fest tickets, marquee sponsorships. Oh wow! Lewis takes twenty-seven day vacation a year. <laughs> the fans see it. We can't pay producers, and look at all the stuff they got. Money, 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 money. Um, what what did Lewis say as, as a reply to this? I, I want to hear what he says. Actually, what did he say? He has a reply. Lewis comments. What did he say? What did he say? We do pay producers from the sub fees and the sponsorship money. Podcast merch is a separate business. Legion of Skank Theatre shows are not produced by gas and we pay the producers separately to help. Skank Theatre is a separate business. I chose to spend my money on vacation. Some people buy property or save. I choose to create memories with my family. <laughs> you stink. I love people do that sort of stuff, man. Lucia Gomez goes on mad vacations, isn't it? You were seeing his Instagram. He's always like, I think the last picture I saw, 
he was on Greece somewhere, right? So imagine being this Bobby Hutch guy and you're not getting your money and then Lucio Gomez is going on holiday to Greece in the middle of the year just like to fuck around and shit and you, have, you haven't been paid yet. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'd be angry. Um, let's see what he said. Let's see what Bobby Hutch said on Twitter. Is there a producer, performer um, actually making a livable wage? This is a good question, right? At Gas Digital. Bobby says, I know what the other producers were making while I was there. I don't know what the talent was making. I'll just say it would be embarrassing if the amount of producer staff was making while I was there was known to the public. So the producers of that fucking shitty streaming network thing called Gas Digital aren't being paid a livable wage. Most of them. I guess he's trying to, you know, hint at. <laughs> Why do these guys like this, you think? Why do you think these guys do this? Because I wonder if it's like a business thing. Like if you've got a business, is there incentive on you to not pay people properly? Because I don't have a business. If I had one and people were helping me out, I would make sure they get compensated f fairly. Especially if I'm if they're crucial to my business. Like I, I need you to do this job and you make my life easier by doing this job. Why can't they just make it fair? Especially in the industry they work in. All these stand-up comedians get on podcasts and complain about comedy clubs not paying them, about not getting booked in certain places, not getting specials. The industry is kind of unfair to comics, right? It exploits them quite a lot. So you'd imagine that level of exploitation they have to suffer, you'd imagine they want to make it right when they get their own business. You know what? I'm going to make it right. I'm going to make sure when I have my own podcast, when I have my own club, when I have my own network, that I pay people like this, I bid this like that. Why don't they do that? Why do they repeat? the scam that they've suffered and then get surprised when people aren't happy about it why it's so sad man um robert says i remember what brendan said of course yeah the, the creating for everyone they think anyone can do it look at tim didn't true free crack bonuses <laughs> because people are stingy yep true fair play um sorry to hear you moved on thanks bud now that uh the, the, what else he said here Lewis fired me for asking for $100 for creating the Regs logo. Uh, to be fair, as easy as this logo is to make, I still think $100 is pretty cheap. That's a mates rate. It's easy to do, but $100 is pretty cheap for that logo. So he, he kind of ripped him off. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He made an asset for the podcast that they're using now all over the place, right? That's it in use there, right? It's with four very well-known comics in their own fields, right? They've all got very successful podcasts or radio shows beforehand. And he made this logo for $100 only. <sighs> Fucking hell. Do you still like uh, them as comedians or is it like total fuck all those guys type of thing? Love you. Um, miss you and the girls. No, I absolutely love Jay and David. Um, I really like uh, I really like all the comics at Gas. I never understood why Louis continued to do comedy. Oh shit! <laughs> I never understood why he continued to do comedy. I told you, Brendan's actually got better standard than Louis J. Gomez. I would down that hill. Brendan Schub is a better standard than him. I don't give a fuck what you guys say. Just because he talks fast and he swears, Louis J. Gomez isn't fucking better than Brendan on stage. I don't give a fuck. I'd rather spend 30 bucks to watch fucking Brendan tell me about beans, cheese, beans, cheese, beans, cheese, than hear fucking Louis J. Gomez talk about how many girls he's fucked or fucking Casey Anthony. Fuck off. Um, in my opinion, he's not that good at telling jokes. He depends a lot on wordplay, but he's a good podcaster. I can't take that away from him. Uh... What else it says here? Could Lewis offer or say anything that will make you come back to Gas Digital? He says, no, nah, I'm not interested. I put too much time and effort and blood and sweat and tears into making this work. It was never really truly reciprocated. Fair enough. What percentage of Gas subscription is going towards shows, websites, V, how much is going towards Louis buying his girlfriend a new car? They keep telling me that Gas makes no money. Oh, okay. That's what he's saying then. So he's saying he's not getting paid adequately. He keeps getting told Gas Digital doesn't make any money but fucking Lucio Gomez lives a good life. So clearly some money's being made. You know, it's not good to watch people's pockets. That's a bit lame. But if you're an employee, I can understand why you'd feel a bit aggrieved when, you're, when your boss keeps coming back with a toasty tan and you don't have any money in your pocket. I would be hot. I would be fucking furious. I might even kick off on the show. When the show's actually on, I'll kick off. Fuck it. 
Lucia Gomez is a terrible boss. And then he replied, right? Luis J. Gomez replied to the whole scandal. And we're going to play the clip now. And we're going to see how Luis J. Gomez responds to one of his main producers, essentially calling him out for not being a good boss and not compensating him correctly. How does he handle this? I haven't seen the response. I haven't seen it. What do you think he does? Does Luis J. Gomez admit his mistakes and offer to make it right? Does he try and make himself the victim? Does he completely dismiss Bobby Hutch's concerns? Does he double down on the fact that he is a great boss and he never lies? Um, what do you think he does? Let's see what happens here. So, yeah, if you guys have been following um, along on Twitter, you know, you guys see that Bobby Hutchinson no longer works for Gas Digital. Um, he left the company uh, a couple months ago now at this point, and we haven't really talked about it because the, re the reality is like, you know, out of respect to professionalism, like uh, this just not anybody's business. You know, it didn't end in good terms, obviously. Um, and, um, you know, more than anything else, um, the reason I haven't really been, you know, talking about it is because I consider or I did consider Bobby a very, very close friend. Um, these guys, and this is the truth, um, the production staff here at Gas Digital, it is not just people that work for me. These are people that we fucking, they're like the, my best friends in the world. Like we're all, like everyone here is all legitimately best friends. Everyone. That to me is a red flag. As much as, imagine if, imagine if Bobby Hutch is being a bitch. Let's just run with that narrative. Bobby Hutch is being a bitch. He's freaking out over nothing. You should never make a long-term career in podcasting as a host, let alone working behind the scenes. He should have been more smart with his money. He should have looked after himself, blah, blah, blah. Let's imagine that, right? Let's imagine that. I still think a red flag for any job that you're at, a red flag, the biggest red flag you can find is when somebody says to you, we're like a family. That's a red flag because you're not a family. You're there to work. You're there to exchange your time for money. That's it. If you find friends there and people that you're close to, cool. But you're not a family. That family thing is super manipulative to make you see past all the indeficiencies they have there working-wise. Always be wary of that. That is the biggest red flag ever. We're a family. We're super close. We hang out. Because it kind of feels like now, thinking about it, those fucking Jamaica trips are like forced, um, uh, are forced team building exercises. They kind of feel a little bit like it because on the outside, they look quite cool, right? When you're as a fan watching from the outside, you're like, oh shit, these guys are going to Jamaica as a group. Look at the picture, look at them having fun. But it now kind of feels like a little bit of, of a forced thing. Like you, you kind of been backed into a corner to go. Like imagine all the staff go, you don't go that one year and then they come back with all these stories. You kind of feel guilty about not being there. You kind of feel left out. So then you save money to go the next time. It kind of feels like they're forcing you to go there in a way. Then you go and then it kind of re um, solidifies this notion that you are a family and you're a friendship group because you go on the holiday with people, usually that you're friends only. So always be wary. It doesn't matter if you're working at a podcast, you're working in a fucking restaurant, you're behind a bar, you're working in an office. If somebody says to you, we're like a family, that probably means they do some fuck shit. So keep your eye open. Hangs out out of work. And this includes Bobby. You know, um, everyone, we, we vacation together. We, go, on the weekends, we go out together. We have cried together. We've bled together. We fucking created amazing things together. When And I, I take it very seriously. And I think my entire staff knows this. And a lot of people know how seriously I take the production here. Um, I know it's not always the best. It's terrible. But, um, you That's know. the funny thing, though. It's terrible. Every time you go on the Reddit, so you see people talking about fucking Gas Digital, they're always complaining. So it's clearly terrible. And how many employees do they have at fucking Gas Digital, by the way? Whenever, you know what? Sorry to keep interrupting and pausing this, but whenever Joe Rogan has this thing where he will say on his podcast sometimes, oh, this is why I love podcasting because it's super free and I get to do it with, like, it's just me and Jamie. You don't have to have many people involved. I always feel like it's always like a bit of a sneak this, right? And I never could understand who he's who he's insulting. I always used to think he was sneak this in Tom Segura with your mum's house, right? Because they've got loads of people that work behind the scenes of their studio. But their thing is quite polished. But these guys, Gas Digital, is so amateur hour how they run and function as a studio and shit, as a show. 
They've got so many employees, so many people in that behind that glass fucking window, but there's always like something going wrong. So I wonder if Joe Rogan's always sneaked this in them because they have all these employees, but the show isn't that great really. So what's the point? So what is he having employees to like make himself look good? So he looks like a boss when actually he doesn't treat them well. I'd rather have five employees I treat amazingly than have 30 or 50 and look like I'm a CEO or entrepreneur. Now, when you create something with somebody, I think that that is really valuable. I think that it holds a ton of value. And me and Bobby have created like truly incredible, memorable things that have changed, you know, changed people's lives in a lot of ways. Legion of Skanks is a show. I get a message a day, at least in my inbox with somebody saying that this show has changed my life and it has been something. <laughs> <laughs> come on how's he not laughing at this come on Luis J Gomez come on brother you have to be smarter than this please he can't be he can't be serious <laughs> Luis J Gomez changed my life <laughs> Legion of Skanks stopped me from ending it all I would have self-expired if it wasn't for your podcast are you serious yo Eva Gas Digital fans are super redacted or he's getting trolled. How can you believe this? You believe your show is good enough to like, I'm sorry, but some would say your show could induce somebody self-expiring. I would say that personally, right? The show's on there, especially when they have all these random New York guys on there that who are all hungry for fame and they're all fighting to talk and shit, right? Those dudes, and, they, and they're like talking jealously about all the West Coast dudes and shit. You're like, this is kind of gross, man. All these grown people who clearly look like, you know, they need a couple more gigs to kind of get started and shit, just here bickering about nonsense. That show could actually end lives. I think so. Not save them. That's my opinion. You leave that shit on a loudspeaker in the background and you hear Zach, you know, who's, who's that guy? Is it Zach? That guy looks like a marshmallow, like talking in the background and shit. You want to just turn it off instantly. You hear them talking about girls and smashing you like, ugh. You guys don't get no, like, what? You guys talking about fucking waitresses, drunk or roofing them or something. Like, I'm not involved, you know? <laughs> Oh my God, it saved my life. Okay, cool, man. See, that's the thing. I wish I had this kind of level of ego. I don't. Maybe that's the reason why I'm not successful. Maybe that might be the reason why I haven't achieved my dreams. I haven't got where I want to get to because I'm not that delusional. I can't take myself that seriously because it isn't that serious. We're just fucking around. I'd be doing this with one person watching, one with zero just to fucking for shits and giggles to waste some time because I don't play video games anymore, right? So this is the one thing I do to kind of replace the video game hole in my fucking life. I got the chat to you guys to talk to about, right? That That's fun. But it's not that serious. It's just fucking around on the internet. It really isn't that serious. You changed my life. You saved my life. <laughs> uh, Legion of Skanks saved my life. Seeing Ari Shafir's nuts and balls, seeing fucking Luce Gomez and Big J Okus and Kiss on stage taught me that I could love as well. <laughs> <sighs> seeing uh, Kim Kongdong, what's it? Kim Kondonga, I've got to say her surname. Seeing Kim Kondonga taught me that maybe I could be a comedian too, right? Seeing her on stage because if she can do it, I can do it. Wow that's really important and um <clears throat> and bobby is, is, he about to cry? Who... is he about to cry no way he's about to cry hold on if i've missed something from this and i feel evil please correct me if i'm evil but why is he crying oh my god he's been the victim bobby hutch complains about not getting paid Bobby Hutch complains about not being properly compensated. Bobby Hutch, the producer, goes on Twitter and airs his grievances like people do. That's what Twitter's there for. 
to fucking talk your shit. I don't feel like I got properly compensated. I'm pissed off. I've wasted all my time here. He fires it off. Now this guy's crying. <laughs> what a piece of shit. What a manipulative piece of shit. Big up Austin Casey. I appreciate you, brother. You said your mum's house has a lot of employees. Is one of them paid to just laugh as loud as possible off mic? Because that shit noise the hell out of me. Hey, yes, Austin Casey. Yeah, that's Nad that's Nadav. Actually, funny you say that, um, Austin Casey. Guess what? You're gonna be happy now. Cause Nadav is has left um your mum's house. I just saw the, 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 the episode now on my phone. He's left. He's I think, you know, he's gonna go do his own thing or whatever. Nadav is uh, allegedly left your mum's house, so you're not gonna be here anymore cackling in the background anymore. But I actually think that is actually a good part of the show. It was actually quite funny in the beginning when it was legitimately funny. Then it will not get funny anymore. But I think Nadav actually added a lot to the show. Their chemistry was really good. Their, their producers are really good. They produce a really good show. They have great artwork. Even if you don't like it, the artwork is very well done. It looks expensive. The studio is lit really well. The mics work well. They get the stuff on the screen well. Even the ad breaks they have in it look really professional. They actually look like they work well together as a team. And the employees do their job and shit. But anyway, is he, is he about to cry? No way. Who helped me create that. And out of respect for him, I've never wanted to uh, <laughs> um, trash him or to disparage his name. Oh my God, Luis J. Gomez. What are you doing, brother? Um, <clears throat> what a f I am. Why is he crying? <laughs> um... You know, um, please explain. Bobby left the network after a while. It wasn't uh, one thing. It wasn't one incident. It was a couple of years of <laughs> me and him butting heads in <clears throat> some very. Re Where are the tears, though? He's crying, but I can't see the tears. Where are the tears? If you're going to cry, cry. If you're going to turn on the waterworks, let's 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 turn it on. Let's go. Come on. Let me see. The, let me see those water ducks. Come on. Let me see the tear ducks go. Real ways. Um. It wasn't one way. It wasn't me yelling at Bobby. I, I don't yell at the staff. Doesn't he, doesn't he yell at the staff on camera? Oh, my God. Luis J. Gomez is the fucking Brendan Schaub. He's the Brendan Schaub of the East Coast. He is the Brendan Schaub of the East Coast. Don't we see him yelling at staff on camera? It's like the bit he does when he's on the show. Real, real Life Podcast or um, um, Legion of Skanks and shit. He, he yells at people all the time on the show. How's he lying? Nobody would take it. You know, like there, there's nobody here on the staff that'll tell you that I walk around like a tyrant like I do on the show. Um, I think I, I, I try to be somewhat understanding. Me and Bobby are two people that we have butted heads in, you know, ways that were, it was, it got crazy. Um, and that was both ways. Um, he we're two minutes in now and he hasn't acknowledged one of this Bobby guy's concerns or frustrations. I, I, again, maybe I'm missing something, but at the heart of it, that Bobby guy, the producer, feels like he was underpaid or not correctly compensated, whatever. It's money issue. It's a money issue. Money, 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 money. Maybe the that logo thing was the final straw that broke the camel's back because, you know, as easy as I think it is to design a logo like this, because I could do this in fucking 10 minutes, I still think he was underpaid for the $100 that he got for it, personally. Especially considering the caliber of people on the show and how far this show could go for a hundred dollars that's a bit that's a bit crazy to offer somebody that to make that that's insane so maybe this was the final straw that broke the camel's back he has, he's not getting compensated properly in his real job and then he, he gets asked to do a favor for somebody and then they're not even get compensated well for that but why the fuck is he crying like he's the one that's the victim started getting really emotional. We, you know, we started calling him Sabi Bobby on Legion of Skanks as a, as a joke, but it came from a real place. It came from a place because he was super emotional and it was probably justified. The amount of work that he puts in, how much he cares about the network and the job. Um, I get, he you know, I care that much as well. So I- Gaslighting? Is this emotional manipulation? Is he trying to reveal some mental health shit? Yo, this is getting kind of weird, bro. Why is, he, why is he saying this stuff about him? Maybe there's something else happened behind the scenes, but the guy complains about money, and now you're talking about him being emotional. I, I get it. So we would butt heads and we would clash, 
and he would yell at me and I would yell at him and um, it fucking, uh, you know, we would just get the work done. I would put it aside. There's nobody in that gas digital that would talk to me the way that he talked to me, the, that, the way that he talked to me. Literally nobody. Um, <sighs> not only because, uh, you know, at, at the Yo, end of the day, it's like we- Big team, oh my God, man. If there's one thing you can almost guarantee with these comedians, these co podcast comedy guys, they are the masters of absolutely running away running 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 away from any kind of accountability they will sprint down the street bro away from accountability it's they're allergic to it they are fucking allergic to accountability we we sort of had that dynamic um but you know he also did really important work so he got a lot more leeway than other people would have gotten he was the executive producer of the network um, you know, toward the end, I, I thought there was something deeper going on, something, um, you know, I, whether, whether it was the work making him sort of crack or what it was, it was just every time there would be any conversation. And it wasn't just with me. This is with my partners at Skankfest with Ralph. Anytime any pushback was given to him for anything, it would, was met with like, really like, just like the energy was, was wild. I guess we kind of know now, like working with Lewis J. Gomez with people like this must be awful, isn't it? You raise a genuine concern that you have and then they throw this back at you. You're complaining about not being paid adequately. You're complaining about maybe being overworked, maybe. But from what I could see, his main complaint was money. And this is how he treats you. He talks about you being emotional. He kind of questions your mental state. <laughs> he kind of throws a few sneak disses out there. Fucking hell, man. I don't know how that guy survived so long, to be fair. Working for Lucia Gomez sounds like a fucking nightmare. Um, you know, and then at the end, he started saying that he wasn't happy with the money. We we did everything we could do. You know, we we genuinely did everything we could do. We we gave him a raise at the end. We started letting him work from home. At the end. We suggested that we start having weekly meetings so we could just let the air out every week and not have blow-ups and... and Everything we did, he it just really wasn't met with anything. And at the end, I like the little blow up thing that he does. It's very Karen esque. Like whoa, like you know, like you drive somebody to be annoyed, and then when they respond back, you're like, calm down, take it easy. It's like no, no, you got me here. You got me to this point of snapping. You don't, you don't get now to tell me to calm down. <laughs> Oh, I do, Lewis Jacob is being a Karen is fucking perfect bro but I can see now why he decided to be Brendan's friend again they're so similar and he ended up quitting he it was a it was a thing with him and Ralph a dumb thing like just a, it was a nothing and he just blew up and said no I you guys don't respect me I have to quit um and it sucked it really sucked um it sucked in a very very big way and it um you know it's been a couple months now and you know, he's coming out and going public talking about how... By the way, I thought he was about to cry. Where's the tears? Where's the tears? I thought he was about to cry before. Two minutes before he was going to cry. What happened to the tears? We treated him and how we underpaid him. And I still think he's going through something. That's the truth. Um, oh. I, I think if you look at the way he... Luis J sounds like Colin Thompson. Exactly. He does actually, isn't it? He's the... Colin Thompson and Brendan Schaub of the East Coast. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you skin it. Oh my God. Did you see what he just said? He basically says that this Bobby guy might have some sort of mental health issues. Maybe he's got anxiety, maybe depression. He's basically hinting at it without saying it. That's why he's freaking out. Bipolar or something. He's questioning him. He's putting it out there. Stuff that we shouldn't know. Stuff that fans shouldn't know about. He's putting it out there. Even if it's true. Even if it is true and he's having a breakdown, should you be getting on? Oh my God, I just remembered something. Do you guys remember that time on Gas Digital? Long time, I don't know when it was, maybe a couple of years ago. There was some guy that was coming on the show quite regularly. Pause when I said that. Who went and had a breakdown. Do you remember that? I don't know what happened to him. He had some sort of breakdown. He had a freak out and they started basically exploiting him a little bit. It felt like they were getting him on the show a lot more. They were talking about him. And then when he had a breakdown, they all kind of abandoned him and didn't really help him out. Do you remember who I'm talking about?
So maybe this might this makes sense. They've got a little bit of history with this, don't they? Yeah, that's the guy. Is it? Yeah, it has. It's him. Thank you, Jesse Black. It's Dalton Pruitt. There was that guy that he freaked out. He had a breakdown or something, and they all kind of just you know treat it as a joke. So maybe this is what they do over there. They do this whole thing. If you tell them something that you're going through, you share with you know because they're your family allegedly. They're meant to be your family, so you share what you're going through. You share that you have some issues, mental health, whatever. Family. They might use it against you. Wow, man. This is a piece of shit move, Bobby Lee. I'm Luis J. Gomez. Piece of shit move, man. He's tweeting and what he's saying. Uh, I think it's very obvious that he's, you know, very scorned and very like, it's just, it's very uncharacteristic of him. That's not who the dude that I knew. Um, and- okay. Um, Jack Black is saying to me, no, Dalton was burnt out, burnt some bridges. Okay, cool. I don't know if it was him, but I remember somebody. Maybe I got it wrong who the exact person was, but I remember there was some person I remember seeing who was the new kind of like funny person that they had on the show. Then they had a breakdown and then something happened. Maybe he was in the wrong, maybe he was on right. I just remember not liking the way that they were talking about him on air. It kind of felt a bit tasteless, you know? You know, it is what it is. Um, Once again, I have to respect the business and I have to respect everybody else. Um you know, that works here. Like, I'm, I can't discuss the details of how much we pay him, how much we pay the other people, what his percentage <laughs> was of guest digital. You know, I'll address it. Because if he does address it, it's going to, obviously, I love it. He can't talk about the things that the guy wants to talk about, but you can talk about his mental health on air. That makes sense, doesn't it, right? I can't get into the business because I'm trying to protect my employees, but I can talk about his mental health. Men- oh fucking hell Lewis J Gomez man come on man this is manipulation 101 Jesus Christ a couple things kind of vaguely like you know he I guess some people were like oh he you know he he said he makes forty thousand dollars after taxes I don't exactly know what his tax deal is I- I'll tell you right now I guess maybe he's talking about just his salary from gas digital um Everyone pays taxes, uh, you know, you can't blame taxes on me, but his salary from Gas Digital was uh, pretty... Com- Everyone pays taxes. Press X to doubt if you think comedians pay taxes. <laughs> if you think these motherfuckers pay taxes if they don't have to, or if they, if, you know, if they don't, if they think they can get away with it, press X to doubt their word. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that in the slightest. Don't give me that tax nonsense, mate competitive salary for podcast producing he also received a salary from Skankfest that was it was a pretty good chunk of change he also got a kickback from legion of skanks that was a pretty good chunk of change um when you look at what he was making overall from the different businesses that i'm at the helm of he was making substantially more than the, he, he he posted that thing i was like you're you fall- so face head i i was going to commit sue is fine but us saved my life <laughs> big up how did you get around that fucking youtube block sue is fine is fucking good <laughs> sue is fine that's really good i like sue is fine big up big up soy boy sue is fine is good oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sue is fine. Also, going back to this, right? Am I am I getting this wrong, or is that Bobby Hutch guy saying his base salary from Legion of Skanks wasn't good? So it doesn't matter if he's getting paid if he's getting paid forty k from from Legion of Skanks or Gas Digital, which is horrible. Forty k even in London is going to be terrible in terms of you having a life where you can kind of do stuff, right? It's not going to get you anywhere, really, right? So, cool. He's making forty k, working all around the clock. But the problem that he has is that his base salary is too low. So even though he's getting all these extra bits from Gas from these other kickbacks, those are all like on invoice. Those are all delayed payments. He's not getting that in his monthly check. So I understand why he's annoyed because his base salary isn't good enough. You know, that's the issue he has with it. Like, (laughs) but Lucia Gomez is like purposely not understanding where he's coming from. (laughs) He's like, dude, you fall within that bracket. It's like, yeah, he does when you add all those stuff in, but his base salary as a producer doesn't fall in that bracket. Big up Austin Casey. I appreciate it, brother.
Luis only hires totally unskilled people so he can pay them very little. Gas Digital is in NYC where there is rivers of talent he could hire. But he would have to pay a living wage which he won't do. He hires... Oh my god. Well done Austin Casey. I didn't think about that bro. Oh my god bro. Oh my god. I feel so bad for these guys. So basically, what Austin Casey is saying is true because that's what happens in LA. LA is a home of the entertainment industry. Everybody's running there to try and make a career. But there's an abundance of talent, but there's not enough opportunities. So if you have the opportunities, you can exploit the talent because you've got the thing that they need. So people end up working for free or getting fucked over because there's an endless stream of people coming in so if you have a hissy fit and you quit it doesn't matter there'll be plenty of people behind you willing to take that job so if chin one day decides to freak out and drop working at the fire and the kid there'll be millions of people that'll be happy to work with brendan and sending their cv to him millions because it's a good job it's in la you do podcasting shit it's fucking easy blah blah blah, blah. the same thing probably happens in fucking new york there's so many people there some people trying to make their way, figure stuff out. There's abundance of talent, no enough opportunities. So even though the cost of living is high and you should be meeting people's standards, you can actually take advantage of them by not offering to pay at all. I get it. I absolutely get it. I understand it now totally. It must be so hard not to get scammed, isn't it? In that industry. It must be so hard. <laughs> it wasn't a six-figure, high-paying job. Um, but most people that produce podcasts don't make that much money. There's a handful of jobs that are out there that exist like that. And by the way, if an opportunity arose for any of my producers to go and make fucking real money, real fucking money, do you think I would stand in the way? I, we would throw them a going away party. If, if somebody came to Shannon right now and said, hey, we want to pay Shannon. Oh, thank you. I should, be, I should be honored that you won't stand in my way if I get another job, if I get offered another job that offers me more money. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing me that favor. Fuck off. And $150,000 a year to go produce this podcast. Do you think I'm going to go, no, Shannon, sorry. Either we're going to match it, which we can't, or we're going to say, congratulations. That's fucking incredible. You that's incredible. I'm happy for you. And that's sort of what this, this business is. You look for the opportunities that are in front of you. And if it doesn't work for you, you move on. You know, and that's just what it is. And, it, you know, for me, I always thought if Bobby was going to move on, it would, you know, first of all, I never thought Bobby would move on ever in a million years. We were never going to fire Bobby. I've never fired Bobby. When he's saying I fired him, he's talking about where he's f literally freaking out about the work, saying he's too much work. He has too much stress. And I said, hold on. You said you never fired him. Now you're going to say you fired him. Dude, if you can't handle it, let me know. And then he would go, you're threatening to fire me. And I'm like, dude, no, there's not me threatening to fire you. I'm saying if you can't handle the extra work, we can't give you the skank fest work or we can't give. I love how he's describing this. That's how you know he's manipulating because he's describing it like in this conversation that Bobby guy was the only one screaming and he was talking in his soft voice, like in his Bill Gates, Bill Gates voice. I'm just trying to help you. I'm sorry that I infected everybody with fucking COVID. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you. No, you matched his screaming. If he's screaming at you, you were screaming back. Don't paint it out like you were the fucking damsel in distress in this fucking, in, you know, um, exchange of voices. Come on, man. Give you the, the this extra, you know, job on the side that that's taking up a lot of your time because that's just the name of the game. I don't know everybody's workload like that. I don't micromanage. As a kid, I was graped in the middle of a vineyard, but since I've aged, I see no need to whine about it. Great streams, AZ. Thanks for keeping us all alive. <laughs> I was you know what's really redacted thank you crash i appreciate it. you know what's really redacted about about this whole thing all these privileged people working in this really privileged industry crying over money to be here to provide us with fun entertaining podcasts and shows and it's just this shit that's the real sad part about it. And this might be the reason why podcasting has died or comedy podcasting scene has kind of died. It's like, shouldn't you be entertaining us, making us laugh, trying to take our minds off from our regular day, our regular every day and jobs and shit and families and friends and whatever troubles that we have. Instead, you hear bickering over salaries that some of us will never, ever make. 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the really crazy bit about it, right? The arguing about money that some of us will never make, exactly Jared Mellerick, in public. And they're trying to use us as the judge and jury. We're meant to be judging this thing. We don't even know these people. And they're trying to, they're trying to convince us that they're good people. <laughs> it's none of our business. They brought this to the internet. And now we have to sit here and analyze this and decide who's right, who's wrong. <laughs> even if he gets his money, we're not going to get none of it. Even if he doesn't get his money, we can't help him. <laughs> it's so redacted, man. That's why when this guy says he's, I get messaged every day, people saying, you saved my life. It's like, come on, man. You might end my life right now. If I keep watching more of your content, you might end my life on guard here at Cast Digital, and I don't think that they want me micromanaging the, the work. You know, I, I we don't breathe down everyone's neck. People make their own hours for the most part, and they get to work on the projects that they want to work on. They get to fucking hang out with their friends. They get to create some really fun shit and hopefully make a little bit of cash. You know, and that's the... the John Smith, you're right. Better than crying over your employees praising you in a video. <laughs> you're right. You're right. If I had to choose what I'd rather be, I'd rather be the boss like Luis J. Gomez who deludes himself thinking he's a great boss but he's a horrible boss and be bickering with my employees on air than be Brendan Schaub pretending to be surprised at a montage to see to watch a montage video of your close family and friends wanking you off. I'd rather be Luis J. Gomez in this equation. The, the job here and the ceiling sort of was where Bobby was at. That is the, the most you can make at Gas Digital right now. It's 40 Unless... <laughs> he's a piece of shit the most you can make at gas digital is 40k while he goes on vacation seven times a year <laughs> i would be so hot i'd be so fucking hot i'd be so fucking furious coming into work and seeing this guy stroll in with his with, with his fucking cold brew looking all tanned <laughs> and his holiday smile on <laughs> And I'm making 40k in New York. <laughs> just about just I've heard I've heard people paying like two grand for a room in New York. Two grand rent for a room. Not even for your own apartment. Right? So imagine 40k doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go far at all. Fucking hell, man. He must be living really tight. Fuck. We grow the business, you know, and that's, I, I think he's talking about how he hasn't collected a percentage of the business. The reason he hasn't collected a percentage of the business is because the business is, we, we reinvest the money back into the business. We have more. <laughs> reinvest my fucking ass. What did they do? What did they reinvest? <laughs> multiple studios we have brand new apps and platforms that we just built um we're constantly hiring new producers to make everyone's jobs that much easier there's so much that goes into it instead of hiring more producers why don't you just make the shows better why don't you just try and streamline your processes why don't you try and work in a more lean fashion and try and get the most out of the small group of producers you already have why are you hiring more honestly they just basically want to feel like they're working in a for a, at a fucking tv studio or something i thought when you make these sort of things you make them to kind of correct the wrongs of the industry you want to basically fix it by making your own thing right i was fed up of working at networks or at tv programs and shit or for tv programs whatever you fucking call them and did my own thing and you do it differently you maybe don't have super you don't have a lot of oversight there's not a lot of fucking you know hoops to jump in and out of you make it easier because you want to correct the wrongs that you kind of felt when you worked in that industry. No, they just continue them. Our overhead is massive. It is massive. And there's been, there have been years where we have not made money at all, where, we have, where we've lost money. There have been years where we've broken even. There's been years where we've made a very little bit of money. Um, and, you know, we create a system here at Gas Digital where a bunch of great comedians and a bunch of great producers can go out and make some money and create some great shit. And that's always been the goal. 
And it was honestly, the goal was never for any of us to get rich, and none of us are rich. There's nobody rich here. There's D- D- Dave Smith, Big J, myself. We are probably doing the best. Besides Michael Bisping, th- that's like the top. Michael Bisping was rich and will always be rich, regardless of Gas Digital. Me, Big J, and Dave aren't rich. You know, um, that's just that. So the reality is, you know. The reality is, it's 40K or go. I mean, it's 40K, take it or leave it. <laughs> Imagine imagine making 40k being a producer at gas digital all the work you got to do you're working around the clock i'm sure this guy's at brendan he's probably texting him all hours of the night to get stuff done to get assets to him right to make sure things are uploaded whatever it's stressful you're always on the go he's probably like chin he always has his laptop with him right he's probably the same as chin his laptop is always with him he's always got a fucking lacy drive a dongle he's always fucking working and then he asks you to make a logo on the side <laughs> <laughs> and he pays you a hundred dollars for it. <laughs> oh, and he comes back from holiday in Greece with his girlfriend, wearing all white, looking all bronze and toasty. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking hell! Oh, I, you know, it really genuinely makes me sad to lose a friend. Um, I'm. You know, I'm. By the way, no tears. By the way, no tears. He, he threatened to cry. He didn't cry. You know, uh, I hope. I genuinely hope the smoke will clear, and I know Bobby will watch this, and I hope the smoke will clear, and he will, um, you know, come around and be like, "Fuck, dude!" Like I don't know exactly know what happened here, but let's put it behind us, because I, dude, for me, it's always, it's always a fucking handshake away and a phone call away, because that's literally how I've always fucking been. Um, I've said this about my actual enemies, much less people that have been friends of mine that, that I'm, that, I mean, literally he asked me to marry him and his wife a year ago. This is not like, it's not bullshit. When I say friends, people, he posted that I, I reached out to, yeah, I, I sent his wife a DM because I was concerned with him. They were like legitimately my friends. People are like, oh, you, re- Cons- again, the, the, manip- the, manip- the, the mental health gaslighting is fucking crazy, bro. This is the type of shit people fight over. You fight over this type of shit. Especially if you're friends, you don't do this. Yes, you can bicker online and say what you want to say, but you don't reveal things in public that only you two would know because you're actual friends. And you're DMing his wife to say what? Is he okay? (laughs) I don't know if these guys just live in a bubble where this kind of communication is okay, but in the real world, stuff like this will get you slumped. You'd get in a fist fight with somebody over shit like this. Somebody would drive their car into work, into your workplace, through the fucking wall, like somebody on a public freakout fucking subreddit clip. <sighs> I DM'd his wife, you know, to make sure he was okay. <laughs> reach out to his wife. What a put? So like, no, no, no. I reach out to somebody who I consider a friend saying, hey, dude, I'm concerned. I feel like we're blowing this up and we're about to lose. It doesn't matter if you're friends. You'd never fucking DM the wife. Talk to him, man. Don't. Ugh. God. Bobby at this job, this is something that he's passionate about. It's something that he's meant to do. That was the words I used, you know. And I was like, I was like, this I want to, I want to get, and and you know, I, I want to get ahead of it in, in whatever way we can. Um, so that's that. That's my perspective on it. Um, I legitimately wish Bobby the best. Um, you know, if if he gets another job in production and and it's, it pays him all he wants to pay, dude, fucking more power to you. I really love that. <laughs> So basically, it's 40k. Take it or leave it. <laughs> if it's not in production, well, then maybe this wasn't meant to be. Maybe you meant to you were meant to go do something else. I don't know, but um, that's really. I love how the minimum wage for a producer in New York is that 70 to 100k, and then they don't even pay like 60; they pay 40. <laughs> they don't even pay like within like a 10 a 10k range of it. No, they pay 40. <laughs> <laughs> really yet i can't really say much more i'm not i'm not going to sit here and go back and forth over the regs logo and all these little details this is all just like stupid shit it wasn't one little thing um you know obviously it was a much deeper thing and it was uh, over the course of years and definitely over the the, the, the last six Yo, months big up austin case i appreciate you Brenda schwab luis j gomez adam 22 what's with these shitty podcast network bosses are they all narcissists? Big up you, man. I like that little voice it does now. Um, 
yeah, probably all narcissists. But I also think, I think, I don't know why all of them don't just hire managers to manage the network and the talent. But I think it's arrogance. You want to look like the big bad businessman. You want to look like the entrepreneur. But I don't get why they don't just set it up and then have somebody manage the talent. That's the easy way to do it. Then you avoid all these issues because all these guys aren't really good managers or business people or people, people, persons or whatever that term is, right? They're not good at that, clearly, because it's all communication. All their issues are communication, all of it. From Adam22 to Brendan to Luis J. Gomez, they just have poor communication skills. And that's because they don't know how to lead. So get somebody that can lead, get somebody that can manage people, and then it's all done. But they want to be the talent, they want to be the big boss, they want to be the entrepreneur, they want to be everything. Uh, get fucked. Uh, anyway, what are you guys saying? I don't want to mention to the real housewives of Pentiok. Uh Don't talk to his wife. He's, she's in the kitchen keeping busy, exactly. Uh, what an idiot. Yeah, big up my guy, Fashion Roadman. What do you say? It reminds me of that story that CEO that bought Rolls Royce and all his employees asked for a raise. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about the fucking... Um, is it the one, um, is it the African food delivery place? There was this place in the UK that was doing, it was fucking honestly, there's no one, you, <laughs> there's no one you can scam easier than black people looking to support black businesses. Some person in the UK set up this like delivery service. I forgot what it was called, but the idea behind it was that it had all black owned restaurants on it, right? So it's like a delivery Uber Eats thing. And, um, of course, that thing didn't work out and didn't probably, didn't probably make enough money because the niche is too small, right? There's not probably enough restaurants or enough of a service to keep that kind of business up. So it didn't work out, you know? It's kind of like making a black-only fucking Uber Eats is fucking insane, but whatever. People supported it because everyone wanted to be like, you know, um, I support black businesses, I can't breathe, all that shit, right? So it happens, it, did, it doesn't work out, but then I think towards the end, before it ended, the owner wasn't paying the employees so i think they didn't get paid for like a couple of months or something right but then the owner did some really clever scamming shit where i think it was a woman she paid only certain people so certain people got paid and then to make it sadder right they would um the people that got paid would sometimes lend the people that didn't get paid money to get to work because one thing about black people is that even if you're not getting paid, you're going to make sure you get to work so you can make sure you get that money coming in. So it's like a double scam. But then to make matters worse, she had a Rolls Royce or something, like a super crazy car parked up, you know, in the driveway. So you're not, you're not getting paid at your, at your job, right, for four months. But then your owner or the CEO, the founder, is pulling up to work in a fucking Colina, Colina, or whatever it's like, a, a Phantom or something, whatever those fucking names are for Rolls Royce. Imagine how you're going to feel. A startup, that you, look, you haven't been paid for it, but you, the founder of it has a fucking Bentley, has a fucking Jaguar, has a fucking Audi, a Lambo parked in the fucking park car park. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's just watch the last bit and we'll continue. This was particularly heated. So um, that's... That's what it is. All right, I'm done. Really, that that's all I got to say. I don't. Uh, Shannon, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to put you in a weird position, Shannon. I was going to be like, Shannon, tell him how great I am. <laughs> I was going to come in and give you a hug earlier, but I didn't oh, want to interrupt. No, I don't need story. a hug. You would have, okay. dude. A hug would have made me cry worse. Oh, what a bitch <laughs> I am. Oh, what a fucking. F ah. <laughs> okay. No accountability. No nothing. Um, good luck, Bobby Hutch. I'm not sure if you're going to ever get your money or your owed. Hope you do, brother. But also, lesson learned, man. Eh? Lesson learned. This guy is a walking red flag. You should have known it was going to end this way. You can't, I don't think, in good faith, build a whole entire career and livelihood on the back of podcasting. I don't think so, personally for me. Um, I think you should probably see it always as opportunity to kind of grow and learn some new skills and bounce around and get some experience. But in a place like that especially you can't really be thinking long term